let's talk about diseases in general. Okay, so no matter what you're growing, I don't care if it's a landscape in the front yard, a hobby garden, commercial blueberries or apples, let's talk about diseases that all kind of fits into what we call the disease triangle. And so basically all the disease triangle is, is imagining that if disease were a triangle, it would be made out of three sides. The pathogen has to be present, so that's whatever the disease causing agent is. That could be our fungi or our bacteria, the two I'm gonna talk about today. We have to have a susceptible host, all right? So if we have resistant cultivars, then we have a host that cannot, that cannot um, you know, uh, develop disease. And then, of course, a favorable environment, all right? So with any of our pathogens, the ones we're gonna talk about, we need free water and moderate temperatures. Free water meaning high humidity, free water meaning overhead irrigation, lots of rain, um, and then moderate temperatures. If you're hot, the pathogen's hot too. If you're cold, it's too cold. So spring and fall are usually the times that we see most disease. Unless we have a cool, wet summer, then sometimes that we'll call that moderate. So a lot more spring and fall, a little bit less in the dry summer, and essentially none in the summertime. So we have to have all three sides of the disease triangle in order to have disease. So imagine that. So how do we use cultural practices to manage diseases? All we have to do is break one side of that triangle and we no longer have it. So we're, we're focusing on breaking one leg primarily and doing a really good job at it. So let's break them down one by one. How about a host plant? We have to have a host plant in order to have disease. So what do I mean by host? If it's a leaf disease, we have to have a leaf. If it's a root disease, we have to have a root. That's pretty common, right? But if it's a pathogen that infects during bloom, that's the critical stage. And then sometimes later in the season, we don't have those risks. So it changes depending on the pathogen and the disease system we're dealing with. Sometimes new growth is the most susceptible. Other times it's overripe fruit. I'm gonna talk about anthracnose um, and some of the others. So overripe fruit might be the, the target of some of these pathogens. So when I talk about host, we can get a little bit more specific than just the plant itself. But the, the biggest thing we think about in, in all of our fruit crops are resistant plants. There are a lot of, there's a lot of resistance out there and we need to take advantage of it all together. <clears throat> Through breeding, we see a lot of different kinds of resistance. With blueberries, we start with blueberry types. Rabbit eye versus southern high bush versus northern high bush, for instance. Um, ID 210, um, that's the Midwest Blueberry Production Guide. Table um, 3-1 is, is where I pulled this, and that's just kind of an example of the northern, um, northern high bush. So those are in there. And we see some, uh, some disease resistance, et cetera, in there. And then once you decide what type you want, you can go into cultivar selection. So each of these types has different cultivars. And um, in chapter 11 in the Midwest, uh, Midwest Blueberry Production Guide, we see, we see a breakdown of some of these diseases. And I'm gonna talk about some of those today. Here in Kentucky, uh, Fomopsis twig blight is very common, as well as the anthracnose fruit rot. We see some Botrysferia uh, canker there too. We don't really see mummy berry and powdery mildew, for instance. So to be able to select your cultivars, there's a lot of information out there, and we try to provide it to you as much as possible. All right, and also when we talk about, um, when we talk about host, we can talk about vigor. A vigorous host is gonna be more resistant to infection than a, than a sick one, just like us, right? So I like to make the comparison. When we're, when we're tired and we're not getting the sleep or we're not healthy, we're more susceptible to cold and some other um, uh, diseases. Well, it's the same thing with our host plants. By keeping them vigorous, they're able to ward off a lot of diseases. So a lot of these that I'm gonna talk about later, are, I like to call secondary diseases or opportunistic pathogens, where they come in when a plant is weak. So we start with wounding, insect damage, bird damage, those are pretty common sense. So a lot of um, gray mold, those types of things, but it can get a little bit more detailed than that. Bad pruning cuts, uh, those are wounds. If a bad pruning cut that doesn't heal, if it's not a clear cut, it's considered a wound. So all of those things, um, the Botrysferia canker I'm gonna talk about later. That's one that absolutely loves a bad pruning cut. 
<clears throat> All right, also uh, in terms of stress, poor nutrition, um, pH. If your pH is off kilter, I can guarantee you, you're going to come in with uh, Phomopsis tip blight, those types of diseases. So again, a stressed plant is not going to be able to ward these things off. It's an open door.